Stephen, sum up the challenge of uh, Motherwell coming off the back of uh, that midweek game. Uh, always tough. Uh, I think every uh, away game in the SPL obviously uh, comes with different challenges. Um, I'm sure they're going to fancy it after the result they got uh, at Ibrox. Um, but it's an opportunity for us to go and perform well and um, try and grab a big away performance. So it's a game we're, um, we're looking forward to. How much frustration is there in the fact that I think you've gone behind a lot more this season than you did last season? Do you look at that and do you say that's a frustration or do you sum up the character by saying I think you've won 10 points from losing positions this season? Listen, we, we, we look at everything, uh, good or bad or indifferent, that's what we do, that's what we're paid to do, that's our jobs. We analyse um, a lot of things about the players from an individual point of view and certainly from the team. And if, if something's popping up more often than not and it needs fixing, uh, we'll work as hard as we can to try and address that situation. So we certainly won't be ignoring anything good or bad and um, it's an opportunity to try and um, get better in that area. Um, but it's certainly something that we've noticed as well. The players have had an opportunity to come out fighting after those setbacks, but haven't done. Does that surprise you, disappoint you? What? just want to get your take on that. Uh, well, I'll have to uh, have a different opinion than yourself on that, if that's your own personal opinion. Um, I think if you listen to a lot of stuff on social media and outside noise, sitting in my position, uh, I think your point's certainly very believable. Um, from the inside, I see a, a group of boys that are willing to work hard and fight uh, as hard as they can. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to work with a team that's lost one league domestic game in 50. Um, I haven't heard that or seen that written uh, on the outside. So I think sometimes it's, it's, it's a case of perception. Um, but in my job, I believe there's a lot of fight, there's a lot of characters, there's a lot of good players in my group. Um, and I've got every belief and confidence that we can move forward. Yes, we've got issues to fix and address. Uh, yes, we've had some setbacks and some challenging times, fixtures and results together. Um, I always like to be honest. But what I would say is I think your personal opinions come from perception and noise from the outside of this group. Okay. Um, my second question to that would be that, you know, in recent weeks there are people of the opinion that uh, Rangers are getting favourable decisions from referees. Just wanted to get your take on that. I've heard that a lot. I've heard that a lot. But again, it comes from um, the outside and it normally comes amongst uh, a social media crowd from opposition teams. Um, I'm sure VAR would be your next question if you had a third question and, and my point is 12 months ago everyone was slaughtering VAR saying it wasn't good for the game, it's, it's, it's slow, it's not even getting decisions right. This year I must say um, it has improved a lot and I'm enjoying it an awful lot more and I'll back up what I've said on, on many a times. Uh, when VAR is in um, it will take all them opposition opinions away from coming my direction but look um, there's a clear share pull. I know the, the, the one you're alluding to, the, there's a share pull. Whether that was enough to be a penalty or not, that was John Beaton's decision, not my own. Um, it went our way. And um, I'm sure every manager will say the same thing over the course of a season. Some you get and they'll, uh, you, you'll feel like, you know, maybe the luck went your way. And there'll be times when you think you should have got something and you never and you feel a bit of an injustice. Over the course of a, a 38 league game, you're going to get some and some you won't. First of all, can you give us a, a squad update in terms of the fitness after Wednesday night? Yes, so um, Ryan Kent's outside now. If he comes through this session, he should clear to come back um, in the group full time. Ryan, Ryan Jack's looking better uh, and closer, um, but I think Motherwell um, won't be the right decision for either of them two players, but they're, they're extremely close. I'm sure you'll see them both before the international break. Philip Alanda's progressing well. We've got a couple that have got some uh, issues from the game on Wednesday night, but we're hoping that they're going to pull through. Um, and Borna will be back with us for the Bromby game. Uh, you mentioned the other night about maybe focusing on the, the back end of the pitch ahead of the, the front end at the moment in terms of the immediate issues. In terms of the defence, do you think it's down to individual errors or is it more a, a, the whole team and more of a, a, I suppose a, a structural thing? 
Well, look, I think what we've got here is a group of players that if there is an individual mistake, no one will shy away from that. I think we have got a, a group of honest lads who will take ownership of that. Um, and sometimes it's clear to see that someone has made an individual mistake. Um, but for me, it, it's not about pointing fingers at any, any individuals. It's about trying to fix the collective. You know, how can we become or get back to our best in terms of our identity, our shape, our organisation? How can we get everyone back um, to doing that all over the pitch? So my job is to fix the collective things. And, you know, I think in any team or any game of football, it's, it's imperative. You cut out individual errors, of course. Um, and I believe, obviously, our good attack and playing will become more creative off, off our organisation because when we are at our best, we get both sides of the uh, both sides of the game really, really well. As a spokesman for social media mayhem, uh, one of the one of the themes that's been developing there is that uh, Connor Goldson's contract negotiations have been affecting his performance. Is that something you agree with? And would you pl put in place any deadline for for resolving that? Uh, I don't listen to people's opinion uh, from social media, so I'm not even sure I, I should really answer this question. Um, I, in terms of the contract, as I said last week, it's, it's a question for, for Connor himself. Um, maybe Ross Wilson, I'm probably third in the queue for your question mark, if you like. But I don't think knowing Connor as well as I do and working around him, I don't think um, it is affecting him at all. Um, that's my opinion on it, but in terms of where it's at and how close it is, I'm probably third in the queue to address that question for you. You mentioned earlier about, uh, about Ryan Kent, and obviously a feature of the team's play last year was the high pressing game, his energy, and also I think his work, you know, when out of possession. Has that been tactically challenging for yourself and the, the coaching team to, to replace that within the group? Well, I think missing a player of Ryan Kent's quality and what he gives on both sides of the games um, always going to have an effect. Um, it's always going to be a challenge for other people to step in because of his high quality and his standards. And um, we are really looking forward to welcoming him back. Um, and as I say, he's not too far away, so he's trained well and worked extremely hard to get back. Hopefully he can find his feet very, very quickly and he can help us to become that little bit more consistent and get in our rhythm. Even the last few games against Motherwell have ended in a draw, I take it? That won't be an acceptable result from your perspective this weekend. I don't think any draw is at Rangers, whether you're playing Benfica, Porto, Motherwell, Aberdeen, Celtic. I've never known a draw to be good enough or acceptable at this football club, so I don't see it changing in the next 48 hours. The reality is, um, on the outside, the expectation and the demands of this football club are to win every game. That's, that's, that's the way it is. We, we accept that and we, um, we have to certainly accept it come Sunday. I also wanted to ask you about some rumours that Cardiff City are considering Michael Beale as a potential candidate to replace Mick McCarthy. Have the club received any communication on this? Did you say Cardiff City? Yeah. Uh, not to my knowledge. Um, I've been with Michael all morning. Um, he hasn't mentioned it from a, a personal point of view. The club haven't brought it to me, so I assume it's speculation at the moment um, in terms of do I think Cardiff would be interested in Michael Beale uh, and other teams for, for, for that matter 100% because he's top of his job. Hi Stephen, um, you've spoken pre-season about the need to continually adapt and, and vary your play because opposition managers have obviously seen your system for a number of years now and we've seen that work against St Mirren. When you speak about fixing issues does that come into developing more variation in games so that you can win more games by changing things in game? Yeah, yeah, it's in, in certain parts. Uh, from an attacking point of view, I've said we need to have more variety and, and give opposition teams different issues and problems to think about. Um, we have uh, a certain principles of play and certain non-negotiables that don't change whatever your system, whatever your personnel. So when I'm alluding to maybe our identity, it's more getting back into that. Um, and once you get the principles right, I believe we've got the variety in the personnel to throw different issues and problems at teams. Um, so it is something that we are working on and working towards, but these things don't happen overnight. Um, 
So yeah, that's the challenge and that's the opportunity, especially when there's certain things to address and fix. We see it on the inside as an opportunity to get better and improve. We don't really over concern or, or worry too much that too much is wrong or, or listen to opinions on the outside because if you do, you're, um, you think the world's going to end very shortly. Just finally, can I ask about uh, Fash and Sakala? You mentioned after the St Mirren game that he perhaps didn't have the impact he'd have wanted, but obviously he comes on against Aberdeen yeah. and wins the penalty, but he won the ball back to yeah. win the, the penalty in the first place. Yeah, I thought um, the three of our subs against Aberdeen had, had a positive impact. I thought Scotty come on and was really brave. He nearly got us that winning goal when he smashed into the post. Scotty's been training a lot more like Scotty Arfield and um, it's given me a lot to think about at the moment which we expect because when I do challenge Scott or we ask a question of him he always comes back stronger credit to him Fashion's appearance against Aberdeen was a lot more positive than it was against St Mirren um, so he needs to build on that and not just be an impact player be someone who can break into the team and, and play 90 minutes and find a consistency in his game probably very similar to Scott Wright who again came on and, and looked lively and looked aggressive so the subs have given me something to think about on the back of the Aberdeen game.